Lower Endoscopic Ultrasound Guided Ganglion Impar Blockade. Here are the author's disclosures. Here are the video's keywords. The ganglion impar is the first pelvic ganglion of the efferent sympathetic trunk and innervates pelvic structures including the coccyx, perineum, rectum, anus, vagina, vulva, and urethra. It is positioned just anterior to the sacrococcygeal joint within the presacral space, adjacent to the posterior aspect of the rectum. As a result of its location and innervation pattern, it serves as an analgesic therapeutic target. There are currently three recognized percutaneous approaches targeting the ganglion impar nerve that have been described within the anesthesia and pain literature. These include the transdiscal, anocosageal, and paramedian methods. Current indications for the ganglion impar block are listed below and include anal and rectal pain etiologies, including proctitis, chronic proctalgia, and proctalgia fugax. Although generally a safe procedure, ganglion impar block utilizing a percutaneous approach includes potential adverse events, including discitis, conus medullaris infarction, needle breakage, rectal perforation, and local tissue trauma. Anatomic limiting factors include the presence of a fused sacrococcygeal joint, calcified sacrococcygeal disc, or patients with obesity that may impair percutaneous access to the ganglion impar. From an interventional endoscopic standpoint, the celiac plexus block is an example of a currently used nerve block that is performed endoscopically. The procedure has been widely adopted since its inception in 1996 as a method of pain relief in malignancy or chronic pancreatitis. Upper endoscopic ultrasound is used for target visualization while a mixture of medication, typically including a local anesthetic mixed with saline and steroid, is used for celiac plexus block whereas ethanol is used as a substitute for the steroid in the setting of neurolysis. Here, we present a novel approach to ganglion impar blockade for chronic proctalgia utilizing lower EUS and fluoroscopy. We present the case of a 62-year-old man with a 10-year history of rectal pain. The pain worsened with prolonged sitting or standing, was deep to his perineal region in location, and described as a fluctuating dull and sharp pain. Perianal, digital rectal exams, and flexible sigmoidoscopy were normal. An MRI spine was obtained and demonstrated degenerative lumbar disc disease and sacral fusion, for which percutaneous approach was not an option. Given non response to lifestyle and pharmacologic management, he was arranged for ganglion impart block for chronic proctalgia. General anesthesia was performed with the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. A standard upper endoscope, linear echo endoscope, 22 gauge needle, fluoroscopy, and a mixture of saline with 15 milliliters of 0.25% bupivacaine and 4 milliliters of triamcinolone at a concentration of 40 milligrams per milliliter were prepared. This choice of medications was determined based on reference to the celiac plexus block as well as in consultation with the pain anesthesiologist. First, flexible sigmoidoscopy is performed under white light to confirm the lack of clear pain drivers and to evaluate for visible lesions. Next, an echo endoscope is introduced into the rectum with the transducer oriented in the posterior direction to locate the position of the sacrum and coccyx. The distance between the EUS probe and sacrum are measured, with the distance to the target area being less than 1 cm. Careful attention is made to evaluate for intervening structures posterior to the rectum and anterior to the coccyx. Color Doppler is used to evaluate for vasculature located within or near the presacral space as the presence of large vessels may prompt consideration for an alternative approach. Visualized here are the sacrum, which is a deep hyperechoic structure, and the presacral space, which is the hypoechoic overlying superficial structure. The presacral space represents the location of the ganglion impar. During the procedure, fluoroscopy is performed with the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. This overlying cartoon represents the anatomic structures of interest, which include the rectum, presacral space, and sacrum and coccyx. The spinal efferent sympathetic trunk courses through the presacral space, and the ganglion impar is the first efferent ganglion innervating pelvic structures. This sits posterior to the rectum. The lower echoendoscope and 22-gauge needle are visualized on fluoroscopy during the procedure. 
Under echo endosonographic guidance, a 22-gauge needle is gently advanced to the sacrum. This is followed by gradual withdrawal so that the tip of the needle terminates within the presacral space. Once the needle positioning is confirmed, the mixture of normal saline, local anesthetic, and triamcinolone are injected into the presacral space near the location of the ganglion impar. The total procedure duration was 20 minutes, and the patient was discharged the same day with a total of three days of antibiotic prophylaxis. The patient remained pain-free at two months following the procedure. Potential contraindications to performing a ganglion impar block using the lower EUS approach include rectal ulcers or inflammation, anal stenosis, coagulopathy, vessel interposition, poor bowel preparation, and rectal cancer located in the posterior rectum and overlying the ganglion. Potential adverse events associated with the procedure include bleeding, spinal injury, infection, bowel or bladder incontinence, and erectile dysfunction. Owing to these potential adverse events, it is recommended that solely experienced endoscopists attempt performing this procedure until further evaluation is performed. In conclusion, the ganglion impar block is well established using the percutaneous approach. The lower endoscopic ultrasound guided approach can serve as a technically feasible alternative.